Aparo Tutorials The Basics To access the Aparo Designer, you just need to create the Aparo Designer button. Create a new Click Sense app, or alter an existing one. Go to Custom Objects, and draw the Designer button with the mouse. If there is no button, watch the installation video, How to Install the Aparo Extensions. Then click the button to enter the Designer. The first time you open the Aparo Designer, you will see this screen. We are in the Clients menu, and see the message that no client is installed. We can create a client by clicking New. Each client, represents an encapsulated Aparo environment, with its own settings and security. The client needs a name, and a unique identifier. Client Security Groups, and the Internal Description are optional. You will learn more about this, in a later tutorial. Clients, Connections, Apps and Widgets are linked. By clicking, you get to the Edit view. Every client needs at least one installed language. You will find the language files in the installation folder, Fast Edit, Languages. For each language, we have the possibility, to have own labels and descriptions. Aparo automatically uses the language of the current user. Before we create our first application, it is necessary to connect to our data. For this purpose, we create a database connection. Simply select your database vendor, and enter the required information. When using new software, a lot is often unclear. Therefore, we recommend the use of the description mode. Here you will find descriptions and examples, of settings and features. We have provided all necessary information, and will save and test the connection. The connection is working fine, and we can now start with our first application. Each application consists of one, or more business cases. Most often, the table business case is used. It creates a list view, of the underlying database table or view. We need again a unique ID, and a name. In addition, we select the target table, with the data we want to access. The business case edit view, contains various menus and controls. Top left, the controls with which we can start, close and save. Below the features menu, which shows the currently activated features. Via the features button, you can easily add, or remove features. An activated feature, will extend the features menu accordingly. At the top center, you will find the business case settings menu, with which you can configure the behavior, and the visual appearance of your business case. The widgets tab contains the widgets. Widgets are data entry and output elements. At the first start, widgets of type input field, are created for all existing database columns. Top left, the controls to add, or delete widgets. On the right side, checkboxes for fast selection, of the most important settings. Primary key, read only, hidden, and mandatory. A business case, requires at least one primary key widget. The primary key combination selected, can be different from the primary key settings, of the underlying database table. The order of the widgets can be changed with the arrows above. To open the edit view, just click on the link name. In the first tab you can change the widget type, we will select the type, look up drop down for all tables here. In mapping and other, you can find the widget column mapping, and settings for default and constant values. 
you can use variables here. And via the variables picker, you can access all predefined internal, and all user defined variables. In flags you will find the settings for the detailed control of the behavior. In lookup dropdown and multi select, you will find the settings for lookups. The SQL where condition serves as filter for the output values. In visual you will find the column label and other visual settings. Visual help texts and data output format will be handled in detail in later tutorials. We want to change the type of two more widgets. Active should be a checkbox. And product description a text area with toolbar for text formatting. Height and width of the text area can be set here. To save space, it can be displayed in a separate window. You can activate the toolbar here. Aparo offers many possibilities to filter data, we would like to show two simple ways. The feature filter data output allows simple comparisons or complex queries. The user cannot change the filter. Filter widgets allow the user to filter the data. They are applied after the output filters and can optionally be displayed on a separate filter page. Checkboxes usually have two states, checked and unchecked. In the filter area, checkboxes can have no state either. There is one widget type that is only available in the filter area. The multi select widget lets you select multiple values at once. And the settings are similar to the lookup drop down widget. Before the first start, let's have a look at the tab visual. The first setting determines the number of fixed columns that do not scroll. The second is the number of data rows displayed per page. A high value can lead to performance problems and a poorer overview. Time for a test run. In the middle, we see the editing area. Here you can change the values of your database table. The first three widgets do not scroll. At the top are the two filter widgets that we just created. We have filtered for all product lines with check market active. We have here our text area in an extra window with toolbar. Besides the filter and edit area, you will find the insert area below to enter new data rows. Followed by the pagination that allows the selection of the pages. And at the bottom the button area, to save, cancel and close. In the tab, linking to click sense, you will find step by step explanations and links. We will handle this in detail, in a later tutorial. Single business cases display only one data set, and are mainly used for data entry masks, comment windows, or detail views. The widget presentation differs from the table business case, but basically the handling is the same. The widgets are arranged in columns here. Column 1. Column 2. We will change the widget type for product line, to look up drop down. And active to checkbox. We also change the product description, to text area with toolbar. And rearrange the widgets in the columns. Widgets can simply be moved, with the mouse to the desired position. We want to have all widgets in the first column, and the description in the second.
Then we change the widget type of product line to lookup drop down. And active to checkbox. Last, we change product description to text area with toolbar and a height of 200 pics. Let's look at the result. The widgets already look good, but we still have to rework the column layout. This can be done in the visual tab. The label and widget width are the default values for all columns. We change the label width to 120 pics and the widget width to 210. And then do another test run. That looks okay. We can now merge both business cases into one application with master and detail relationship. We open the edit view of the table business case again. And add another widget of type business case link. In mapping and other, we select our single view and connect product ID to product ID. This will serve as filter in the detail business case. In the visual tab, we set column, window and hyperlink labels. We do another test run and try the link widget. The detail window opens, and we can change data. We are trying another option. Opening the details in the same browser window, allows us to automatically update the master view, so that the data entered, is immediately visible. We will change the product size of the first entry. The close button also saves the changes. We're at the end of the basics tutorial. Please also note our other tutorials, with detailed descriptions, and demonstrations of features, settings and use cases. Questions? Send an email to support, at aparo.solutions.